Hi, but it's bro to see ya. Welcome to another episode of On Top and Hot. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I will be your host. And this is the weekend of September 8th. So here on On Top and Hot, what we like to do is go searching for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. We like to call those hot penny stocks. Now, personally, when I go looking for a hot penny stock, I'm doing my research by looking at the charts first. I'm looking for a chart that has heat, that looks like it's ready to run. Maybe there's a lot of volume coming in, or the price is sneaking up underneath a strong SMA, something that makes that chart look tempting. When I find a chart that has heat, then I go rummaging around looking through the press releases and the filings, trying to find a catalyst, a match to set that chart on fire. When I find one, then I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. Well, I got one for you this weekend. This is a Canadian mining company. We haven't been looking at enough mining companies, and we really should. This company is called Grid Battery Metals, ticker EVKRF. They like to refer to themselves as EV Car because that's what they focus on. The EV critical metals, lithium and nickel. She finished the day on Friday at 13 cents roughly and over 33% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We like to refer to this as the better tier. It's better because they have to audit their financials to be on the QB. That means we're getting fundamentals. The CPA is going through the numbers, doing the accounting. This is good for us and good for the company. It makes them more transparent more trustworthy. They've also got verified information. They got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. This is information being validated behind the scenes by the OTC markets. So this company's looking good with validated information and validated financials. So what do they tell us about the company here? Well, they tell us that Grid Battery Metals Formerly, Nickel Rock Resources is a Canadian-based exploration company whose primary listing is on the TSX Venture Exchange. That's the Canadian market. The company maintains a focus on exploration for high-value battery metals required for the electric vehicle EV market. Now, before we jump into the company, let's dive into why I think this company's hot. Let's look at a little bit of history of what's going on right now. As you are completely aware, we've had some situations occur over the last few years which have disrupted our supply chain. First, we had the COVID epidemic, and then we had the war between Russia and the Ukraine. And this made getting precious metal, critical metals for our technology difficult. So we took a proactive stance and said, we're gonna create a domestic supply chain for critical minerals here in America, including lithium. Now, we do have lithium here in America. We have it in California, North Carolina, and Nevada, which supplies roughly 4% of the world's lithium. Now, surprisingly, would you believe that Nevada is one of the richest lithium resources in the world? Second only to South America, Chile, and Argentina. Now, right now, Nevada's got some huge plans of converting their state into a vertically integrated EV market state. They want to take care of these EV batteries from cradle to grave. They want to extract and mine all those minerals, then process them, manufacture the batteries, and when the batteries come to the end of their lifespan, recycle them. Big plans. Now, lithium mining is huge in Nevada. They've got about 37,000 claims on the books, but there's a lot of companies and corporations out there that own lots and lots of claims. The surprising thing is, out of all the companies in Nevada, heck, all the companies in America, there is only one lithium mining company currently in operation. This is Silver Peak. This is owned by Alby Marley, ticker ALB. This is in Nevada. They have been in business since 1868. In 1948, there was a big fire, burned down the entire town, and they closed the mine. 22 years later, in 1966, they reopened it, and they've been doing limited mining, producing about 1% of the world's supply right now. But there are other large corporations in Nevada that aren't in operations, but are making progress. One of them you need to be aware of is called Thacker Pass. 
Thacker Pass is owned by Lithium Americas Corps, ticker LAC. This is another very large lithium mining corporation that has the capacity to produce 1 million EV batteries a year. Well, General Motors just approached them, giving them $650 million to get them going. What GM is doing is jumping ahead of the line. Why wait at the end to get your supplies when you can go straight to the source and lock them in? Now, there's a lot of companies out there, car manufacturing companies that are building electric vehicles and are probably going to be just as smart as GM. So I would think a lot of these companies are going to be approached. Another company that has just gotten a big chunk of money is Rylite Ridge. This is owned by Ioneer, ticker I-O-N-R. They have just been offered $700 million loan by the Department of Energy. Now, you're going to see a lot of other companies that we're talking about that are all down there in Nevada, and this is one of them. They are all competing, and things have not taken off yet. The light has not turned green, not yet. The real problem here is, is that there's a lot of outcries. There's a lot of court cases. There's a lot of conflicts. You see, the courts are being congested with hearings. You have indigenous people that feel their land is being marred and scarred. You have environmentalists saying water rights are being abused. Animals are being hurt. Plants are being wiped out. And all of this has to be considered. Which leads us into the second problem. Every parcel of land has multiple government agencies that have jurisdiction over that. And they each have their own say of what's going to go on. So you've got one agency saying, yes, the mining can happen. But another agency saying, no, we've got a problem with the water rights or this piece of buckwheat is being hurt and we can't get them going. So compromise is going to have to come in sooner or later or someone's going to have to bring down the hammer and just make a decision and say, we're going forth no matter what. So there's a lot of potential that is sitting on the table right now. The game just hasn't gotten started. So let's take a look at what this company is all about. Best place to get this information? Directly from the company. So we're over here at their website, gridbatterymetals.com. Now the company currently has four projects underway. One is up in British Columbia, Canada. This is their nickel project. They call it Hard Nickel Group. Then we've got three projects in the United States, all dealing with lithium, all in Nevada. Volt Canyon, Clayton Valley, and Texas Spring. Now, don't let Texas Spring confuse you with the name. It is in Nevada. It is in Granite Range, Nevada. Now, the Texas Spring Lithium Project is 400 hectares large. Does that mean anything to you? Didn't mean anything to me. I had to actually go look it up. Turns out that an acre is about the same size as a football field, and a hectare is roughly two and a half acres. So a hectare is about two and a half football fields, if that helps. And they've got 400 hectares in the Texas Spring Lithium Project. As I said, a lot of these big companies in Nevada have lots of claims creating their one big parcel. No exception here. Texas Spring Lithium Project has 34 full load claims and 30 partial load claims. Now, what's most interesting here is that they have no partners. They have no joint ventures, no royalties to give out. This is 100% theirs. They get to keep all the revenues. So they tell us here that the Texas Spring property encompasses a series of mineral load claims situated in Elko County, Nevada. Their property is adjacent to the southern boundary of the Nevada North Lithium Project, which is owned by Surge Battery Meadows, also on the market, ticker N-I-L-I-F. Surge's initial drilling efforts have successfully identified lithium-rich clay deposits with significant mineralization. In their 2022 drilling program, the average lithium content recorded was 3,254 parts per million. Folks, that's rich. For any area to even be considered a source, you got to have at least 100 parts per million. Surge Battery Metals, they were looking for land that didn't have anything less than 1,000 parts per million. Now, here's a very interesting fact you probably weren't aware of. The people who have been building grid battery metals are the exact same people that built Surge Battery Metals. Same group of investors. 
So this is the parcel of land that they got together for Surge Battery Meadows, and they have just gotten all this land for the Texas Spring Project as well. Looking at the next project, this is the Clayton Valley Project. It is in Clayton Valley, Nevada. It is 930 hectares large with 118 claims in the one group. Again, no royalties, 100% theirs. Our claims in Clayton Valley are boarding on the Silver Peak Lithium Project of Albemarle Corporation, home to the only producing lithium mine in North America. Clayton Valley's lithium is contained in both underground reservoirs called aquifers in the form of salty groundwater called brine and Monti Morlite clays that feature high levels of lithium. The property has strong potential to host lithium brine deposits in favorable geological horizons within the basin fill. This is a very unique area here. There is what is called a grabbin. A grabbin is kind of like a sunken area, like a sinkhole, but the land just falls in the hole and plugs it up. So you end up with something that looks like a riverbed. Well, it is in that sunken area that lithium gets really thick, and they've got a whole large area of that, a grabbin, on their property. So this is Silver Peaks area here. Here is Century Lithium Corp. That is another company on the market. Here's Pure Energy all of their property, another lithium company on the market, and Clayton Valley Project. All of these companies are working in the same area because it is super rich with lithium. Now the company's last lithium project in Nevada, it's a little different than the others. You probably noticed that their claims are adjacent to other major companies that have already done a lot of exploration and testing. They know those areas are rich in lithium. Well, Volt Canyon Lithium here is their newest project, and this is smack dab in the middle of Nevada. Most of these big corporations are way up north or way down south, but there's not a lot you can see in the middle. Not that I've been able to find, and they haven't done a lot of exploration on this. This is out in Monitor Valley, Nevada. It is 635 hectares large, comprises 80 claims, and again, they don't have to share anything with anybody. This is 100% theirs. They tell us that this property features sediment-hosted lithium clay targets and has excellent accessibility, enabling exploration and exploitation throughout the year. And that is really what they've got going on with all of their sites. Easy accessibility, by road, by helicopter, no problems whatsoever. The deposits origins is thought to be similar to Clayton Valley's clay deposits. So they really believe there's going to be a lot here. They've done a little bit of exploration, and so far they haven't brought up anything exciting, but they hold this property as well. Now, the last piece of property is up in Canada. This is Hard Nickel Group. They are into hard rock mining here. You got to get the rocks out of an open pit or something like that, crush the rocks, and then process it to get your minerals out. This is in British Columbia, Canada. They have 2% royalties that they have to give away with this one. Outside of that, they own 100% of 6,125 hectares. Oh my God. And an option to acquire 100% interest in 1,400 additional hectares. So you're looking at about 7,500 hectares. What does that come out to? Something like 20,000 football fields. The Grid Nickel Group consists of five claim blocks and three groups in the area surrounding Mount Sidney Williams in close proximity to the Dakar Project and the Baptiste deposit of FPX Nickel Core. They are FPX on the market in Canada. So they've got these four projects. One is for nickel, three are for lithium. Now the one up in Canada, they may actually get some decent help from the Canadian government themselves. If I remember correctly, they've got a program up there where Canada will cover 50% of the expiration expenses. So for every dollar the company spends, they will get 50 cents from Canada. So they've got a lot that they can do up there as far as I'm aware. All right, so that gives you an idea of what the company is doing and their projects. Of course, there is more due diligence you can dive into. But let's jump on over to the OTC markets now and get some information about that stock. We're going to begin this stock query off by looking at the relative volume for grid battery metals. Over the last 30 days, she's been doing roughly 87,000 shares a day. 
definitely under the radar. Friday, she jumped about 150% in her volume, going to 218,000. She is getting more attention, and the chart shows it. Looking at the share structure for the company. EV Car has an outstanding share count of roughly 180 million. And if we can trust these numbers, the insiders, the management, they own about 70 million of them. That would leave us about 108 million in the float. Not a great float, but it's not terrible. Let's just call it average. Looking at the financials for the company, we don't have anything annually or quarterly because they're not making money yet. They're not in operation. Who is besides Silver Peak? Nobody. Everybody's working, getting ready, getting things in place, but nobody's making revenues yet. However, the company is well financed. They've got $4 million roughly that is already allocated to keep the business going forward, and they have roughly another $5 million that's not allocated that they can use any way that they need. So they're in good shape financially. Looking at the disclosures for the company. We don't have anything here, so let's go jump on over to that news. The company may not be in operations, but they're still doing things. I am back here to June 28th. They tell us that the company has engaged two companies, Triumph Holdings and Life Water Media. These are companies that are going to help them with their promotional activities, help them with forms, social media, get their name out there to the public. Also here in July, the company closed their acquisition of Texas Spring property. Then we've got an article here. As ESG requirements promote onshore of critical mineral mining, this company with multiple projects in the world's most mining friendly jurisdiction could be the one to watch. They are talking about grid battery metals, but they also mentioned surge battery metals and century lithium. And the last piece of news we got here came out September 6th, Grid Battery Metals to begin work on its Texas Spring Nevada Lithium Project. Now when they say begin work, they don't mean beginning operations of mining. Nobody's doing that yet. They're doing exploration, they're doing testing, they're adding more claims. That's what everybody's doing, waiting for the green light from the government. And once we get that, it is going to be a free-for-all. Now, I've covered quite a few different lithium companies in this video. Right there is a list of all of them. At the very top, ALB, Silver Peak is the only lithium company in America in operation. Look at the price of that stock. Now, look at the very bottom. That is EV Car. She is the most affordable stock out of all of these, and they're all in the same boat. So, I see a lot of potential here, folks. Let's go take a look at that chart now. So now the best part of the DD, the charting. We are looking at ticker EVKRF. This is grid battery metals. And of course, we're looking at a six month, four hour view. Now, actually that's the entire chart for the company. They came on the market here, April 17th at three cents. A couple of days later, they fell just a wee bit down to 2.9 cents. And from there, she's been climbing basically, hitting a high on Friday of 13 cents. That is a 400% gain from corner to corner. Now, there's no doubt about it. She is in an uptrend. She broke out of this channel right here to her detriment. She tripped and fell all the way back down to the bottom of the channel, but got very enthusiastic once she hit it. Look at the size of that green bar. Pushed herself all the way up over top of the 50, tested the 50 once, and she has taken off floating on her nine-day SMA and climbing. Our volume has been pretty steady, but it has been declining slowly here. But our oscillators are steady strong. This is our PPO, our percentage price oscillator, a lot like your MACD. MACD uses the full price. The percentage price oscillator, yes, uses a percentage of the price. And you read them the same. You want those blue lines over the other line climbing up. These are looking good. And our RSI is currently at about 68. So the four-hour chart doesn't look bad at all. 20-day, one-hour view. 20 days ago, we had a low of about six cents. She was underneath the 200. A few days went by. She started wrestling with that 200, successfully got over top of it, and has been climbing. Looks like it is the 20-day SMA that she is bouncing off as she's climbing. And I notice we don't have one red bar on our hourly chart on Friday. That was a good day. 
Our oscillators back me up on this. All of them are pushing up, looking strong. RSI is currently at 64. Five day, five minute chart. Well, we are in an uptrend here, going from nine and a half cents to 13 cents. She's got a little bit of roll, bouncing off of her 50 and climbing nice and steady. Oscillators are warm, they're not hot, they've kind of cooled off. It's kind of funny because they're all flat, but you can see our price is rising. Interesting. Now, it's nice to see a stock rising without a catalyst. This company's getting set up like all the lithium mining companies are. Nobody's being operational right now except Silver Peak. And did you see the price of ALB? $184 a share. And this is 13 cents. What if Ford or Chrysler comes to this company and says, we want to secure a contract with you. Here's $500 million. Anything can happen. We don't know. And this company is prime like everybody else. And it's the best buy on the market. I like the company. EV Car. It's a good ticker to remember. EVKRF. Now, of course, I did not do all the due diligence for us. There's a lot more to do. So please jump in there and do it. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.